It's here! So some quick housekeeping before we begin. One, this is a pre-production G86. Two, this is not sponsored by Lumix, so they did loan me the camera. And three, this is technically a first impressions video because I've only had the camera for two weeks. However, I've cleared my schedule and I've used just, I've done nothing but use the camera for two weeks straight, as you're gonna see. So here are my seven favorite features on the Lumix GH6. Internal ProRes recording. The main thing that's held me back in the past when considering ProRes is just the additional unit that you need to record to externally and I really like the Lumix Micro Four Thirds systems in particular because they are very run and gun. I like to be a bit of a ninja when I work. So the GH6 has a solution. Now, straight away, you can record ProRes internally. Of course, it's a larger file format, so you're going to want to use external storage eventually. In a firmware update, SSD recording is coming. So instead of having your big Atmos Ninja on top of your camera, you can stick a small SSD on top and record unlimited. And because ProRes is optimized for Mac, it runs buttery smooth, even on my older 2017 iMac. Number two. We now have 120p in 4K. In cinema 4K, no less. Here is the spec. Hold on to your hats. Cinema 4K, 420, 10-bit, delightful footage with audio and autofocus, which is a big step up from the GH5. In my humble opinion, the GH5 120p was a bit pants. It was HD, it was shot in a variable frame rate mode, you had no audio, you had no autofocus, and because it was lower bit rate, it did just pull apart in grading. You couldn't really do much with it. So I'm very, very, very happy to report that the 120p out of the GH6 is beautiful. And having the autofocus and the audio just means I can use it like 60p, it's just fit into my workflow absolutely seamlessly. The GH6 also offers 240p and all the way up to 300p in HD, which is really, really good and a great option to have. <laughs> Right up front, I thought I would cover some quick fire wins. Pew, pew, pew. Vlog is pre-installed. Yay! You don't have to buy it like you did on the GH5. It takes the S5 battery type, so it's higher capacity and you can use them interchangeably if you have both like me. There's a brand new 25 megapixel sensor with no low pass filter. So now all the video modes are just crop free, you use all of the information on the sensor. No crop is such a big deal for me as a hybrid shooter because when you're shooting on the S5, your 60p crops in. And also if you do use the GH6 for photography like I do, the extra megapixels is a, is a good thing to have. There is a brand new 2022 Venus engine, which is roughly double the processing power of the predecessors. Even the S5 is running an older processor than this. And this gives us much better autofocus and better stabilization and better image processing in general. Speaking of autofocus, I know you're all curious and I think you're gonna be very impressed. Let's get into the autofocus. Let's try with uh, this cable cut out of Danny DeVito. and one for the S5. And the GH5. It's 
pretty rapid. I'm well aware that this is probably the weirdest thing I've ever done. I'm just waving my mini Danny DeVito at you. But wait till you see the life-size one. <laughs> Quick fire broccoli. And here's my broccoli tattoo. <laughs> and shuffle back. And how long does it take for people to lock back on? How about a ridiculously massive bust of seven of nine? Like imagine I'm reviewing this weird thing and I just want to put it up to the camera and be like, hey, check this out. The S5's having none of it. How about the GH5? No, hopefully the GH6 does. Oh yeah, of course the GH6 does. S5. Cool. GH6. Just checking I'm actually in frame and you're not just getting my forehead. <laughs> and GH5. Hi. Hi. Come on, you can do it. Uh, 35 millimetres, because that's the longest that the GH5 will do on that lens, so I thought it would be fair. Oh, and the S5 still hasn't yet found me. Hi. Back to Danny DeVito. Dude, ergonomics. To me, it's like the S5 and the GH5 and the S1H all had a baby. You've got the full tilty screen, you've got the fan, and you've got the lock button from the S1H. And I love that you get much more freedom of movement from the screen when there's a HDMI plugged in because on the GH5 it used to bop against it and you'd have to unplug the HDMI and you know, it was a pain in the backside. This is full freedom of movement, just like the S1H. The body is a little bit chonkier. A little bit chonkier. It's a little bit bigger than the GH5. It's quite similar in size to the S5, but it's by no means a, a big camera. It's still very portable, and I really like the subtle aesthetic changes. On the left function dial, we now have an option for 75 frames a second for photography, and also a 100 megapixel handheld high resolution photo mode. And did I mention those 75 frames a second for photography are all in RAW? Because, ooh, there's 100 gig gone. <laughs> We have four, count them, four custom buttons now. Whatever you need, you now have more custom modes on your dial than on any other Lumix camera previously. And we have extra buttons on the front, which I absolutely love. Which brings me on to my next point. Organize and personalize. This is something that Lumix have always been fantastic with and something that I really, really value. And the GH6 has taken it to the next level, let me tell you. We have a lovely aesthetic red second record button, which you can use if you're using a shoulder rig or if you've got your camera higher up or if you're recording yourself, but they're all customizable. So for me, I'm using that as a quick access to my waveforms. This way, when I'm setting my exposure, I can have a full size waveform on the screen and then bang, away it goes again. Because we have such a plethora of video formats and frame rates and MOV, MP4 and ProRes. Naturally, there's a lot of options to choose from. Lumix have made this very, very simple for you because when you're searching for your most used formats, you can make a custom list. And then you can put that custom list in your quick menu and then you can quickly change from one to the other and off you go. So this makes it so easy. If I want to quickly change between 120p and 24p, I can go into the quick menu and choose my favorites without having to go through the absolute monstrous list of amazing things that this camera can do. Also, this whole video has been a little test because I'm in continuous autofocus mode. Bam, have a broccoli. Come back to me finally reliable autofocus. One feature I've wanted for a very long time in my Lumix cameras is the ability to punch in and check your focus during recording. This means you can continue to monitor your focus throughout the take. Throughout the whole take. Sorry, I'll start messing with the autofocus now. It's just such a novelty. <laughs> it's such a novelty for me, honestly. Now let's look at low light performance. 
Now myself and I'm sure a lot of you guys were assuming this would have dual native ISO, but we don't have that here. What we have is a feature called high dynamic range boost. I was a little bit skeptical when I heard this, but seeing how well the autofocus has been improved and how well the stabilization has been improved with the new Venus engine, let's give it the benefit of the doubt. Here's some test footage I've shot in very low light. Let's see how the GH6 performs. This, I hope you agree, is objectively a very, very dark environment. Let's have a shoot off low light photo video between the GH5, the GH6 and the S5. So let's take a look at some photography first. They were all clean at f2.8 as you would hope, so let's jump to f8 at ISO 3200. I would say the GH5 is usable, the GH6 is very clear, and of course the S5 is also very clear. Let's ramp it up. 6400, the GH5 starts to stress. The GH6 is very, very usable, and the S5 is very usable and possibly a little bit sharper. Let's move on to the ISO 10,000 at F10. Now, I don't know in what world you would need these settings, but it was a stress test. Of course, the GH5, God bless its soul, is useless. The GH6 is markably better. Absolutely brilliant for ISO 10,000 on a micro four third sensor, can we just say? And of course, with the dual native ISO and the full frame goodness, the S5 absolutely smashes it out of the park, but, the GH6 is not far behind. Let's move on to video, which is what I'm sure you're most excited to see. At ISO 6400, the GH5 is noisy as hell. The GH6 is perfectly usable, and the S5 Azure Blooming Hope is perfectly usable. Let's ramp up the stakes. Here is ISO 10,000 on the GH5. Bless it. The GH6, completely usable, in my opinion. I mean, obviously, it's more noisy than the S5 will be because we have a smaller sensor, but look at the difference between the GH6 and the GH5. This is usually the part of the video where I go through some cons, and honestly there ain't much. When we get the SSD external recording in the firmware update, that is a big plus, because let me tell you, the 128 gig card I have in this does not go very far. Speaking of the card, it is a brand new type of card, so that's something that you're going to have to factor in when you do upgrade to the GH6, but it does enable you to do all of this incredibly fast, massive recording internally, so it's well worth the expense. One con of that for me personally is I almost wish it, it got rid of the SD cards altogether and just made the jump because you can only record certain types of formats on the SD card now. So you do basically lose your dual recording function unless you're recording in lower codecs, lower frame rates, etc. As a wedding photographer and videographer, I really love that peace of mind where I know if, if one of my cards corrupts, I do have a backup. Yeah, I wish they'd have jumped in twice with the new card and then we could enable some proper dual recording. But I guess when the SSD comes out, you'll probably be able to record into the new card and into the SSD. So we'll still get backups that way very soon. I assume, I haven't been told that. I know the SSD thing's coming, but I don't know if you can record to both at the same time. I'll add that to my wish list. <laughs> I was also a little bit concerned about the fan, making it a little bit chunkier, maybe a little bit noisier or whatever, but it's fine. It doesn't show up in the footage. It's dead reliable. I've not had any overheating issues whatsoever. And it is truly, truly unlimited recording, which I think is incredibly impressive. I had a wish list before I went to the event and this has ticked off everything I wanted and more. If I'm completely off the money, no one will ever see this. <laughs> Better autofocus. 4K, 120p. A stupid display button where it just seems to be in a very awkward position. Maybe they'll get rid of that. Future-proof internals. A few more steps of stability. Battery life. If the battery life could be similar to the S5 or even better have the same batteries as the S5, then I can use the ones I already have. I will post all of the related videos here once they're online. They'll be coming out in the next weeks. So do subscribe if you want to see more GH6 content and stick around because we always have fun on this channel. If you like photography, videography, and just nerding around, then stick around for more.